Good morning, friends, wherever you are, and welcome to today's Cichlids and Coffee. I hope uh, you're having a good weekend so far, and I hope you're having a cup of joe out of your, uh, out of one of our cups. So, <laughs> shameless plug. Mmm, delicious. And yes, we will be giving away an adult Fusco, and... Uh, Beautiful fish. They get up to about 10 inches. Uh, one of my favorite uh, haps, predator haps, Nimbochromus. And uh, that is going to be courtesy of, courtesy of our channel, one of our channel sponsors, our, actually our main channel sponsor, the Cichlid Shack. So big shout out to James for that. So watch for that because that will be occurring later on in today's live stream. So let's take a look here at who's on board. I am cruising the chat. Let's see here. Hey, Angelo. Angelo was first on the chat this morning, but I know he already has a set of stickers. <laughs> right, Angelo? <laughs> hey, Cat Sailor. And uh, it looks like Michael Machos is on, the, is on and Angelo is, we, is here. Good morning, Angelo. And Andy. Andy, is the T silent? Is it sure? 40 below where you're at, Andy? That's ridiculous. I'm not going to complain about our uh, 30 to 40 degrees. Hey, Cat Sailor. Cat Sailor in the house. And Michael Lernero in the house. Let's see here. That new, uh, Angelo, uh, that new generator review will be out, I suspect, in a week. The arrangement with the manufacturer is that I send them the video. They sign off on it. And then I go ahead and post it. So I don't know how long that process takes. I suspect it's going to be about a week. Fishman Marcus in the house. Daily Dose and Hero. Happy weekend to you too, my friend. Hey, Salient. Salient Aquatics in the house. ZZip is here. Salient, of course, is a moderator. I have the best moderators on YouTube. And uh, I appreciate their help. Hey, Tyler. Good afternoon to you. Tony Punch in the house. Setting up his 12-year-old son's 29-gallon. Very, very nice. Stoked. Moving up from 10. When you're moving up from a 10-gallon aquarium, 29 just seems enormous. It's just such, a, such an adventure, right? I remember going from a, a 60, to, to, a, a 60 to, to a 125, and I was like, oh, my goodness. It's, I felt like I was running the, uh, the city aquarium, you know? Amazing. Anyway, that's so much fun. That's how I actually got back in the hobby. One of my sons, I was on the road for a while um, because of my job. And so I, I, I was away from the hobby. And then I gave an aquarium to one of my sons. And then he went, he went off to school. And so I, I ended up back in the hobby with his tank. So um, at any rate, very, very cool. Love when parents are passing it on to their kids. JD, good morning. Let me see here. Hey, Jerry. Jerry in the house. Jerry and I were talking about uh, Aquashella yesterday. I've got an old Aquashella shirt on from a few, year, from a few years ago. So I'm going to be in Aquashella in, uh, in November in Daytona, Florida. I'll be hanging out there with Jerry and actually staring, staying at Jerry's house. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. We'll probably visit some fish stores while, we're, while I'm out there and put together some fish store walkthroughs for you we'll probably do a walkthrough of jerry's fish room and a bunch of other fun stuff so uh stay tuned for that i'm also going to be uh, giving a talk at the east tennessee uh aquarium society aquatic association I'll, I'll get all i'm getting a promo piece and i'll and i'll share with you and that's going to be in june so uh that'll be fun all right d's aquatics hey to you and Dan Coat in the house. And Michael Welsh. All right. So how's the AV? Give me an AV check. How's the uh, sound and video? How does it look to you folks? Let me know in the chat, and that'll tell me that we're good to go. Let's see here. Last name. Okay. Gala Aquatics comes in with the super chat. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate that. 
I appreciate the assistance. AV is good. Thank you, Vibes. I appreciate that. Midwest Aquatics in the house. Darren Lockhart. We had Jay Fuller. Good. We got some great names here. Patrick G Gregory Daniels. Which one of those do you go by? You go by Pat, Patrick, Greg, Gregory, Dan, Daniels. A lot going on there. I like it. I like it. Thank you so much for showing up. Hey, GP in the house. Ex Kali Kev. Every time I see that name, I think I'm ex Kali Ben. So. <laughs> Hey, hey, Melissa. Good to see you here. And Brian Park and Frank. Hey, Frank. Good to see you. And all right. Let's go ahead and get the show on the road here. Let's do the, um, what do you say we do the official start? All right, all right, and uh, we are going to be doing a Fusco giveaway today, and one of my favorite fish. This is not the Fusco. The, the pictures of the Fusco you're going to be seeing today are not the one you're getting. You're going to get one that's going to be, I'm sure, beautiful. I've never gotten a, a bad fish, a bad, uh, a bad cichlid from the cichlid shack, but this is a Fusco I used to have back in California, and I sold him when I came out to Nashville. But uh, Nimbochromus fuscotaneatus, just call him a fusco for short, beautiful fish, uh, definitely a predator, hap, gets up to 10 inches, loves a high protein diet, so don't put him in a tank where your maboon are having uh, fry because he will feast on them. So uh, we will be giving away one of those bad boys, one of my favorite, favorite fish. Now... I played a video about a box that I had received, the generator, and one of you guessed it, and for some reason, I never received an email with the information. I think it was Ronnie Love, but hey, Ronnie, if you see this video, send me the information about the, the way you guessed what was in that to uh, ben.o.cichlid at gmail.com. If you try and chat with me via youtube or instagram or anywhere else there's a there's a chance i might not even see it even facebook there's a chance i might not see it so all right any um any super chat today that's over ten dollars u.s in the u.s is going to receive some sarah food can you see that we have some sarah probiotic just a way of saying thank you just a way of saying thank you and some vipin vipin family staple food these are these are great super high quality foods any super chat over 10 bucks today I'll, I'll go ahead and send you out just as a thank you a couple of these sample packets of sarah food if you're in the continental united states otherwise the postage and shipping gets crazy also on the uh fusco the Fusco, which, which as a standalone fish is about 70 bucks, you'll get the fish for free. You will have to pay the shipping, and the winner has to be in the, in, um, in the U.S., continental U.S., only because shipping can be a problem outside of the U.S. So just get that clear up front. I don't want anybody to have a, an upset or a broken heart here. So... Today's topic, uh, today's topic is the starting up of an aquarium. Now, there's, there's a few things we can talk about on that subject, and, and I certainly want to know if you have any specific questions about it, but, and we can roll it back as far as, uh, you know, picking the space that you have for your aquarium, uh, de determining the, the footprint of the tank that you want to have, right? Because that's going to determine, that's going to help you going forward with, with the entire plan. What kind of fish can you get? Um, where are those fish going to be in, in, in three years, in five years? Uh, is your tank going to be large enough for that? So you have to sort of think this thing out. And that is really point, uh, point number one on setting up a tank 
it, it's got to be planning and patience, right? Just planning and patience. Figure out where you're going to put it, what size of a tank you can put there, and then from that, from that sort of blank canvas, we can then start to paint, you know, paint the masterpiece and decide what direction we're going to go with these, uh, with these fish. And <clears throat> now, let's go back a little bit, a, a little bit further before that. When you find the place that you want to put your tank, and I'm just getting back down to just brass tack basics. When you get down to that basic, basic uh, spot of, of, of where you're going to put the tank, first and foremost, figure out how, if it's level, if it's level side to side and front to back. Sounds kind of stupid, but you know when most, you know when most people realize their tank isn't level? You know this, right? You know this probably from experience. When do people realize their tank isn't level? The first time they fill it and they realize that the left side is much higher than the right side or the front is much higher than the back or they fill up the front and the back is overflowing, right? Right? Or, they, or one side is, you know, one back corner is overflowing. So get yourself a, a level, a simple level, and, and, and use, don't use, don't use um, these kinds of shims. Don't use these. These are wood shims. And and they they have their purpose, they have their use, and they're and they're good. Certainly for keeping my computer still while I'm doing a live stream, they're good. But don't use those. Get a hold of these uh, composite uh, plastic hard composite plastic. They're not going to they're not going to break down or deteriorate when they get wet. So. Uh, Get a hold of a bag of these. They're pretty expensive. You can pick them up on Amazon. I might even have them at my Amazon store. So uh, check them out and, and use these and your level until you've got everything level. Then uh, fill your tank and, and, and check it again because sometimes your stand can, can settle a little bit or the floor. The floor can, can settle or bow just a little bit, right? And... Uh, at which point you may want to, you know, lower the water level and then shim it up again or uh, level it again. In some of my bigger tanks, I use a large uh, ceramic tile, like real heavy-duty tile that you could put a refrigerator on and a stove and a dishwasher, right? Real heavy-duty tile. Um, I, I, I use big pieces of that to bring up because this, this garage slopes. It slopes towards the opening, which is great because if there was ever a, you know, if the hot water heater were to blow up or something, it, the water would go out towards the street. But, it, but every one of my aquariums has to be uh, lifted on, on the back side towards the street, has to be raised up just a hair, about a, you know, as much as a quarter to a half inch. And so I have to use tile. So some of you folks want some of this Sarah food. I got hit with a couple... A couple uh, super chats here. Let me check this real quick. Uh, let's see here. Hey, Tony. There you go. Send me your address, Tony, to uh, ben.o.cichlid at gmail.com. And Jay Fuller comes in. My last video watch for a while back to working Saturdays. Uh-oh. Jay, we're going to miss you, buddy. I'll have... Uh, you can always catch the replay. and uh, And, of course... Occasionally, there'll be a, a cichlids and suds on Wednesday nights. So maybe we'll see you there. But thank you, Jay. And thank you, Tony. And if you folks want that food, send me that, uh, send me the, uh, your complete, you know, complete name and mailing address to ben.o.cichlid at gmail.com. So again, getting down to basics on the setting up of a tank. Be sure you're, you're level so you don't have to be messing with it later. Now, Here's, here's the number one way, here's the number one way that people jam themselves up when they're setting up a new tank. And for those of you that are tuning in late, or tuned in a little late, we are giving away a Fusco today, courtesy of our friends at the Cichlid Shack. And uh, we are also uh, giving some samples of Sarah food, very high quality food. 
to any super chats over ten dollars and in the continental united states so just so you know about that so uh the number one way that people will jam themselves up when setting up a new tank is they order fish they get a hold of fish and well look at all these beautiful fish from the cichlid shack i'm going to go ahead and order them while i set up my brand new 125 gallon tank well the fish arrive you know in like you know under a week you know whatever was worked out with the shack and you're not set up yet or you haven't quite you, you know you, you, there's a leak or you can't get the filter working right and now you now you're in a jam you're in a real jam so let, let's take it let's take it a step at a time let's get it level let's fill it up let's get the heater in there and let the heater sit for about 20 30 minutes and then plug it in and if it's like one of the aquarium co-op heaters just you know set the temp and uh, or if it's one of those long tubes turn the dial and 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 keep checking with your thermometer to see where you're at in reality but let that all settle in get your get your substrate get your decor so that you're not messing a lot after the fish get there with a bunch of decor changes get it all looking really good then throw in throw in a little bit of fritz zyme 7 now um some people like uh the secam product now what is the secam product is it called stability and then there's dr dr tim's i heard it's a good uh, uh you know a good bacteria in a bottle but throw some fritz be sure the water is conditioned before you add the bacteria i've said this before in my and it, and it came up in my interview with fritz the two reasons the uh, beneficial bacteria will not work. Uh, reason number one, reason number one is the water was not conditioned and the beneficial bacteria was killed by chlorine and chloramine or even ammonia when it was put into the tank. So be sure the water is conditioned. Also, be sure that the expiration date on the Fritz container is make sure it's still current make, make sure it's not past expiration fritz does have a shelf life there's two types there's a refrigerated type of fritz uh, t uh turbo start and there's also just the kind that you can leave at room temperature i have the room temperature one now i have used the refrigerated one as well but um, add some instant bacteria now if you if you can get a hold of it if you can get a hold of it get a hold of some uh, get get a hold of some media from an established tank and throw that into your filter if you already have a tank put the put the filter that you're going to be running on the new tank on the old tank and have it running for about a month or more maybe six weeks and then simply transfer that filter off of the old tank and onto the new tank you can also have media inside filters this is one of the advantages of something like a sump a sump you can man you can have all kinds of media in there sponge filters that go into your canisters sponges that go into your internal filters uh, large pieces of pinky floss you can just have all that dumped into your sump and when it's time to set up the new tank just pull all that out and get going hey whip swirl yes be sure that all your plumbing is done especially if you're doing especially if you're doing a sump be sure your plumbing is done but even with canisters and things make sure that you you know you, you your hoses are cut and all of the connections have been water tested to ensure you have no leaks and this is before you get the fish and even before you add the bacteria just make sure that it's a rock solid setup. And thank you for that super chat. So, <clears throat> all right, so if you go to your local fish store and say, look, I'm setting up a tank 
do you have some, can you give me some media out of one of your filters? Chances are they have, they have some big sumps with a bunch of stuff floating in there and they can give you some media. Don't, don't make the mistake of thinking that water from an established tank will give you an instantly cycled tank because it will not. There is some beneficial bacteria, certain kinds and small amounts in the water column, but it's not enough to get your tank established. Very often what I'll do is I'll bring over half, 50% water from one of my established tanks. So like a water change from an established tank, I'll run a hose over the new tank, fill it halfway up. I do that mostly for pH purposes not for bacteria. And then the rest is conditioned tap water. And then I go ahead and I add my Fritzyme 7 or whatever bacteria in a bottle I might have. And as an extra safeguard, yes, I'm extra careful. I then will add media from an established uh, aquarium. In my marine land filters, the marine land filters have a, a, a plastic frame that you put your media in, right? It just sort of slides in place. Well, behind that, you have room. And I have sponges from internal filters in the hang-on back filters. So if I need to start up an internal filter, I pull the sponges out of the hang-on back filters put them into the internal filter, pop the internal filter into the new aquarium, and it's good to go. Again, be sure that the water is conditioned in the new tank or you risk killing off the bacteria in those, in those filters. Did I miss a super chat? Let me check here. I got Whips World. And I got Tony, and I got Jay. All right. And I got Gay Aquatic and Pets. Very, very good. Thank you for that. And if your uh, Super Chat's over 10 bucks, be sure to send me your mailing address to ben.o.cichlid at gmail.com. All right. So, I fit, my aquarium is level. I've got all the decor, the substrates in. I filled it up and I conditioned the water. I added bacteria, either from established tanks or bacteria in a bottle. Now I'm gonna start the, the gradual process of adding fish. And you need to add fish right away. Reason being is that you've added bacteria to the tank and the bacteria needs to eat. And what does it eat? It eats what the fish produce. So either you're gonna be dropping ammonia into the aquarium, and they do have products, right, that you can use that are like ammonia in a bottle, or you're gonna be feeding that bacteria with the waste of fish. I go immediately with fish, and I'll add, probably um, if I had to come up with a rule of thumb I would say you could probably add about maybe a fish, a fish for every 10 gallons, roughly. Now, there are some fish that are real rugged, like uh, black skirt tetras, right? Some of these fish are really good to put in initially and just see how they do. And certainly you can be testing the water, checking it out. And but letting it run its course, don't do don't do too much. Just let that cycle, kind of you know let let the bacteria populate, let the bacteria take hold and establish, let the fish feed the bacteria. Now what'll happen is if things are going the way they're supposed to, you might even get especially if it's a brand new tank. I haven't gotten this with the tanks I've set up for a variety of reasons, but you might get an algae bloom. You might get some fogginess. 
And that's just a sign that the, that the, that you're progressing along the way you're supposed to. You're getting some bacteria. That's okay. Let that run its course. It will actually start to dissipate. It will start to disappear. If it bothers you a tremendous amount, throw a little per, uh, uh, sea campurigen in there, maybe a little pinky floss, maybe some um, crib batting, uh, the, uh, the, uh, flo the kind of floss you can buy from a fabric store, untreated, right? Be sure it's not like, like flame retardant because that's chemically treated. Get a, uh, some type of a, um, of, a, of, a, of a type of a floss, that, like a batting, and, and then put that in the filter. It'll clean it out. It'll clean it out real quick. If you have a canister filter that has a UV, a UV light, that can help. I've found that UV lights in canister filters, they don't do a lot for bacteria and virus, but they will help with, with clarifying the water. I, run, I would run them on weekends. Canister UVs, I run them on weekends, otherwise I don't run them because uh, they sort of, they're, they're, they're good to a point. You wanna go really strong on a UV, get yourself a good quality UV twist that has to have its own pump. It runs the water slowly across like a 25 watt twisted UV light and uh, that's like the best way to go if you're going to go with a UV. So, um, hey, Salient comes in with a super chat. Thank you, my friend. So at any rate, at that point, you're really good to go. You, you've put your fish in there. Uh, you might need to do a little fine tuning. I like to have my water turning over five to 10 times per hour, keeping in mind that you, when you put media into your filters, it's going to slow the flow down. The, uh, if you're using a sump, the height of the hose from the sump to the tank is going to slow it down. It's called head pressure. So just keep those things in mind. I don't want to get too complicated here, but just keep in mind that you want to have with very flat Broadfish, angelfish, severums, discus, betta. You don't want to have you don't want to have ten times an hour. You don't want to have a super amount of of uh, water turnover. You're gonna blow those fish around too much. Uh, silver dollars. You don't want to have real strong gushing water. That's gonna be it's gonna be upsetting to them. So be closer to maybe five times an hour. All right, but you know you've got your water flow going right. The tank is looking good. You've got about four or five fish in there. Okay, start adding some more fish gradually. Maybe put in a cleanup crew. Put a Cynodonis cat. Put a couple quarries, depending on the kind of aquarium you have, right? And little by little, that tank is going to become established. It's going to become rock solid. It's going to become stable. As long as you don't do anything crazy and drastic, well, on the second week, you decided that you didn't like the substrate, so you pull all the substrate out. At the same time, you did a water change and you cleaned out the filters, and the next morning, all your fish are dead or they're gasping at the top and you don't know what's going on. So as long as you just kind of go slow and steady, you're going to end up with a, this ecosystem that is, to a large degree, bulletproof. Everything I'm talking to you about, I've made mistakes with. I'm talking to you from, you know, I've got the, uh, the battle scars <laughs> about each one of these points because I have violated almost every single one of them. And uh, so I'm telling you, uh, you take your time and in about six to nine months, maybe a year to 18 months, depending on what you've got going on, you're going to have a, a, a bulletproof, stable aquarium that you're going to be able to m mess around with where you will be able to swap out the, the, a good, you know, you'll be able to swap out the, or, or add substrate, take out substrate, add decor. Take, and the thing is going to be pretty stable. It's not going to go nuts on you. Yeah, still do your occasional water tests, make, you know, stay on top of the usual stuff, right? But 
you know, slow and steady, man. That is the, uh, make sure I didn't miss anything. I made a little list. Oh, here's an important one. Don't worry so much. When people set up a new aquarium, they can't sleep. Do I hear a leak? Is that water flowing under the floor? <laughs> Are all my fish dead? <laughs> Don't worry. If you do it slow and steady, and you add the fish gradually, you do the water conditioning the way I've described, you're going to end up with a stable tank, and you're not going to have the anxiety that so many people have when they're starting a tank. So don't worry. Make it a fun experience. Do each step until you know that that step is done completely correctly, whether it's the plumbing, whether it's the decor, whether it's the filter, whether it's the fittings on your canister, whether it's the media in your... Whatever it might be, make sure it's dialed in, right? Rock solid. Then move on to the next step, nice and steady. No anxiety, no worries, no expecting to see a dead fish when you walk into your fish room. Just, you don't need that. Just don't worry. Just, be, just do it steady. And uh, really plan it out. Starting, I mean, I'm telling you, rolling it all the way back to the leveling of the aquarium. You just plan it all out and go, okay, where do I want this tank in three months? Where do I want it in six months? Where do I want it in a year? Now, wait a minute. I've got a 55-gallon tank, and I'm putting Oscars in it. You know what? That's, gonna be not, that's not going to be sustainable. I'm going to need a 70-gallon or greater. So let me rethink this. Okay, back to the drawing board. You know, like really think it out. Think it out. Start slow. Uh, use things like quick start, media from established tanks. Uh, use your local fish store or other fish keepers as resources for that. Uh, increase everything gradually, right? Your fish, increase them gradually. And, uh, and don't worry about the fog that shows up. That is normal. All right? So uh, let's see here. Vibes Aquatic. You know, Vibes, you, you hit 10 bucks, Vibes. You, you hit 10 bucks, so, you, you, so send me your, your mailing address again. I know I've got it somewhere. Send me your complete name and mailing address to ben.o.cichlid. I'm going to send you some more Sarah food. So uh, if you tuned in late, Super Chats in the U.S. get samples of Sarah food. I hope I have enough of it. <laughs> Be sure to send me your mailing address. Gia Aquatics and Pets, what to do if tank crashes? I hate it when tank crashes. And I have had tank crashes. My 90 crashed, and I lost a beautiful uh, paratilapia. Boy, I love that fish. You know, starry night, gorgeous fish. I lost a red spotted Severum. I lost uh, AC Hecli. I think I lost one of my Geo. Oh, man, I was. I was so upset and i had no one else to blame but me i violated the steps that i just gave you if you follow the steps i just gave you you take it slow you take it easy you're going to do fine you're not going to have a crash now you want a safeguard against crashes extra test your tap make sure there isn't something crazy coming out of your tap if your tap has a super amount of ammonia or anything like that, you know, you may want to condition a little bit more, maybe add a little extra conditioner, right? But again, that's that worry. What if it crashes? Uh, if you follow the steps correctly, you're not going to crash. If it does crash, what do you do? Test your water. Determine what happened. Look at the fish. Is it disease? Is it a lack of oxygen? What is it that happened? Like really nail down what happened and then hit the reset button. That's all you can do. That's all you can do. And trace back a little bit. And I tell you, every problem I've had, it doesn't mean that I haven't gotten bad fish or I haven't gotten 
uh, faulty equipment or, or, I mean, I've had stuff like that, but let me tell you, every time I run into a crash, it's always come back to, to me. It's always come back to user error. And so I, I backtrack my steps. I pull up some videos. I do a little research. I do a little Google searching. And more often than not, I will discover that, oh, man, I made a mistake. I forgot to do this, or I forgot to do that, right? Didn't condition the water when I did a water change, or I didn't plug the heater in, or I, you know, something, something. All right. Did I miss a super chat here? Let me see. Salient Aquatics. Are you talking about a, uh, oh, you must be, you must mean a Fusco. It looks like it says Busco versus Stigma. Polystigma? You must, I, I think you're talking about a, a Fusco versus a polystigma. A polystigma is a lot like uh, a living stone eye. Except the polystigma, from my experience, has a blue-green. When they get fired up, they go blue-green, and their pattern is more complicated. It's a bit of a more complicated pattern than, uh, you'll, find, than you'll find on a... Um, on a fusco a polystigma is a beautiful fish they get very big and bulky a lot like all of your nimbochromis right and they both get up around 10 inches i have found that the fuscos can be a bit more dominant a bit more aggressive whereas the polystigma can be more like a linny Nimbochromus lini in, in its demeanor, a little bit more kind of like a Bucachromus or a, or a, or a uh, Frostro, the Sand Diver. They, they could just be kind of lumbering around and, and not really interested in getting into it with anybody. So uh, I haven't seen polystigmas around too much recently. Uh, Fusco's, you can get them anywhere. You can pick them up at, you know, PetSmart, Petco. And I know some people go, oh, wait a minute, you want the Fusco with the X on the side? And I don't know. I don't know. I think they're all beautiful. A Fusco with a, uh, my Fusco. Look at the, the yellow, the yellow on this Fusco. Yeah, an, an unbelievable, an unbelievable blaze on his forehead that uh, just sort of goes all the way down the body and b blue cheeks. He's just a, and that you know he's got that blaze on the forehead. It, you know, he almost looks like a, like a European Z rock, you know, with that beautiful yellow and uh, it's just a beautiful specimen uh, from the cichlid shack. So. By the way, before we do the uh, giveaway here, let's go ahead and do the cichlid's choice. It's a little graphic here that uh, James worked on. What do you think about that graphic? Just to introduce cichlid's choice. And we have a... Uh, Let's see here. This is to, in today's cichlid's choice. Looks like a Bucachromis. And I'm going to pull up the, uh, here we go. So this likes, looks like the F1. Now, what does F1 mean? F1 means it is, uh, its, its parents are right out of the lake. 
So this is the first generation born in captivity. Buco Rhodesii Leptura yellow. It's a beautiful fish. Beautiful fish. Five to six inches. Eighty nine ninety nine. I don't know how many years it takes to grow out a guy like that. All right, let's see here. Now here is something he has in stock. This is a Fusco. This is a Fusco that's fired up. And this, this Fusco is, let's see here. I'm gonna move him over so you can see him a little better. There we go. This Fusco, Buco, Buco, is about five to six inches. And you see when they get fired up, they go all blue on you. Kind of like the living stone eye. When you see the living stone eye go all blue, it's trouble, trouble brewing. Even though mine tends to be fairly mellow when that happens. Beautiful Fusco. And you can see him here when he's not not fired up you can see the pattern on him now imagine that pattern a lot more squiggly a lot more uh, twisted and turned and you'd have yourself a polystigma a polystigma has uh, a pattern like that but it has lots of um, more twists and turns in it all of these fish are predators and a lot of them are um, ambush predators especially when you start to get into the living stone, I will, where, where they will lay on their side, lose their color, and look white and pale like they're dead. And then when the little fish come to check out the dead fish, they become a meal. Now this one here, now James, if you're on the, on the uh, if you're on, this might actually be the, uh, Rhodesia leptura yellow. And the other one might have been the heterotania. This one has more yellow in the body. Five to six inches, eighty nine ninety nine. Beautiful fish. Again, you start getting into that Buchochromus family, one of my favorite families of fish. Anything you get from the shack over a hundred bucks, get fifteen percent off, use shack attack fifteen. Or you can get um, a fifty dollar flat rate on shipping up to 50 pounds use ben sw50 if you want to use southwest for your shipping keep in mind southwest does not deliver to every airport all right i've got another fish for you now this looks like a young strigatus oh no 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 this is a, a young gar this is a young gar these are not easy to find. This is an F1 Malawi gar, six to seven inches. Very hard to find. That's why you're seeing the $120 price. Beautiful fish. I've got one back here in my tank that you've seen before. And they develop those very strange lips. But he's got one in stock. A Malawi gar. Beautiful fish. And what do we got here? Now this looks like a young trout. This is a young Malawi trout, F1, five to six inches. And trouts, for those of you familiar with trouts, they can take a long time to color up. But when they do, you know they become spectacular. So he does have trouts in stock. Okay, we saw that one already. Young Gar. Okay, now here's the Strigatus. Now, Strigatus is a beautiful looking fish. Cousin of an eye biter, a lot more mellow than an eye biter. Develops a beautiful um, dorsal and beautiful egg spots on the anal fin and just a real beautiful blue. So they've got Strigatus in stock, five to six inches, sixty-nine 
So there you go. Don't forget to use the discount code for Shaq's choices. I have the I have a lot of those fish. I have a lot of those fish behind me here. Here's the here's the trout. Here's the gar. Here's the Fusco. Down here at the bottom. Here's the Buco, Buco Chromis yellow. Behind the trout. Here's the living stone eye. You can see the spots on his body. That means he's, he's kind of mellowed out right now. That can change in a second. <laughs> All right. So like I mentioned, we're going to be giving away to somebody in the United States for shipping purposes. You will be responsible for the shipping, but you're going to get a hold of a beautiful Fusco from the cichlid shack uh, keep in mind they need a ph of 75 to 84 they love a high protein diet like extreme extreme cichlid uh, pellets they love that i give them um, frozen krill and they will get eventually up to 10 inches so just keep that in mind so if you're in the continental united states and you have a setup where you can handle a fusco uh, type the word Fusco into the chat, capital letters, Fusco. Type it into the chat. While you do that, I'll check and see if I missed any super chats. Angelo, thank you, my friend. Thank you for that super chat. Vibes Aquatics. What brand of chemicals to help start a tank? Well, I, I like the Fritz vibes i like the fritz chemicals uh, and that's a turbo start fritz zyme uh, fritz zyme products i've got a bottle here i'll just show you If you want to be in the drawing for that Fusco, if you're in the United States and can handle a 10-inch fish, type the word Fusco. And unfortunately, moderators, moderators, and, uh, and James, if you're on the uh, live stream, you can't participate. <laughs> so uh, this is uh, the... Wait, oh, wait a minute. That's the wrong one. Hold on. I got the wrong bottle. I got Monster 360. That's a good product, too, but really great for clarifying a tank. Hold on. I must have used up my Fritzzyme. Well, look for a bottle like this, except it says Fritzzyme on it. <laughs> Fritzzyme 7, and that will get your aquarium going. I think Seachem has a product as well. I think it's called Stability, maybe. Double check that. Uh, there's also one that's been around for a while that is pretty well known and pretty popular called um, Dr. Tim's, I believe, Dr. Tim's. 
All right, so let's see here. Let me go ahead and close this. And close. All right. So what I do is I take the chat and I shake it around. Up and down, up and down without looking at it. And then I stop doing it and I move the cursor over into... Hold on, let's do it again. These are all moderators. <laughs> all right, I'm not looking. Move the cursor in. And again, a moderator. You moderators. <laughs> all right. Hold on, I got to shake it around some more. Right to the bottom. I can read this. Peter, who, A-H-U-Y-N-H. Peter, H-U-Y-N-H. Peter, send me your full name and mailing address. I will forward the information to James, and we will make the arrangements to get you an F1 Fusco. Very, very cool. And Peter, I'm going to send you a code that you then need to type underneath this video, underneath the live stream, once it, it goes uh, and posts and posts onto YouTube. And then we will go ahead and then you type that code that verifies that I've got the right Peter. And then we will go ahead and arrange to get that over to you. All right. Congratulations, Peter. Very, very cool. Perhaps one of my favorite Nimbachrome. It's one of my favorite haps of all time. If you go back to my early videos, the Fusco was always, always one of my favorites. Thank you, everybody else, for playing. And uh, let's see how many people leave now that were here just for the drawing. <laughs> all right. So... Um, Let's see here. Peter, yes. So Cal Cichlids is asking, did Peter win? Peter did win. And uh, I hope you're still there, Peter. Yes, you are. Okay, good. Thank you. Very, very cool. All right. So let's see what your questions are. And I'm glad I thank you, James, over at the Cichlid Shack for donating that beautiful F1 Fusco. And I appreciate that quite a bit. Let's see what your questions are. Do you have any questions for me? Go ahead and uh, type them in the chat. And we will go from there. Any questions, type them in the chat. And let's see if I missed any questions that came along with Super Chats. A big thank you to my moderators and to all of you for showing up today and also uh, I sometimes forget to mention this but I really have to uh, give a big shout out to my uh, my patreon members who support me on a monthly basis it's actually the patreon monthly support that is going to get me over to Aquashella in November that's that's the account that I use for special trips special projects it's a way to support the channel on a monthly basis. Uh, for as little as $3 a month, you become part of what's called the Garage Gang. Uh, the details are in the uh, description underneath the video. So thank you so much for uh, the support that my uh, Patreon Garage Gang members provide. You are very, very appreciated. 
and you can see your name scrolling by. All right, let's try and do a, a lap of the fish room, uh, except live without, uh, I don't have a video for you of a lap, but let's just go ahead and take a look at some of the fish. I can turn the camera and hopefully not disconnect any of the cords. Let's see here. So hang in there with me. Let's see if we can do this. In the distance. That's the uh, better better duplex. And the betas, are, the betta fish are doing great. Both of them, I'm very happy with how they're doing. So that tank is becoming a bit more established, like I talked about earlier. I lost a couple betta in the process, and uh, for a variety of reasons, but these are doing well. The main thing I changed was my feeding of them. I don't feed them twice a day; they get fed once a day because I think the bettas that I lost were lost because of bloat. It, they just got a little fat on me and then it stopped eating. This is just a little tank with some liar tail mollies in it, but the planted tank from glass cages where, I'm, where I've got a bunch of fry and a bunch of platies and that tank is doing very, very well. I'm harvesting I'm harvesting uh, water sprite from that plant, from that tank. Here's the 90 gallon. You bet he's doing well in there. That tank has a little bit of a, a different lighting. And next to that, we have the uh, planted tank. For some reason, I haven't managed to kill the plants in this tank yet. So, uh, a big shout out to uh, the plant, the quality of the plants that were sent to me by the co-op, along with the uh, root tabs and the easy green liquid that I'm using in there. But all the fish are thriving and the plants are looking good. Let's swing back around. Do you prefer a, a recorded video of the fish room or do you prefer this live on the fly lap of the fish room? You tell me. Well, let's take a look here at the uh, at the 300 gallon. You can see those fish are doing just phenomenally well they were fed pretty well this morning but if you can see here doesn't matter whenever I get close it's it's feeding time in their mind 
Let's take a look at the 210 gallon. I'll turn this light off. You can see that tank's doing well. Everybody's looking good. That albino Oscar is just, I think, I think he's just beautiful. And so is the red tiger. You can see a little chocolate cichlid there. They like to hide under the wood. And there's the big vieja. And next to him, we've got the Salvini. She's a beauty. People sometimes think the Salvini is a saltwater fish. the fire mouth doesn't get a lot of a lot of attention but that fire mouth is a fish i picked up here locally the other fish are pretty much from the cichlid shack but i picked that fire mouth got like green eyes a green ring around the eyes just a beautiful fire mouth here's the jack dempsey nicaragua is hiding behind the rocks there nicaragua has become very subdominant in this tank Here's your one lap of the fish room. I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope you enjoyed today's live stream. I think we're pretty much on the hour here. And I want to thank all of you for sitting in and I congratulate the winner of that of that beautiful Fusco and I thank James at the Cichlid Shack for providing that. Thank you to all the super chatters. Uh, be sure adjustment there. Be sure to get me your your mailing address, and I can get that that's that food out to you if you super chatted for uh, a little over. If your super chat was ten bucks or more, be sure to get me your your mailing information. Let me just do one more adjustment here. All right, We're moving in the right direction here. Let's see. All right, that's good. All right, so there you have it. And if, unless there's a pressing question that is burning. Our Baglio, I have various cichlids, 10. My eye biter is gulping for air, but nobody else showing this behavior. Any ideas? Okay, folks, any ideas about what might be wrong with that eye biter? Uh, it may have something going on with its gills, gill plates. Sometimes you can get a type of parasite that will attach to the gills and prevent the fish from being able to get oxygen. Uh, that could be an issue. There could be other factors. How does his belly look? Does his belly look normal? Uh, does the rest of him look normal? Or um, exactly, saline aquatics, gill gill flukes so uh, if you're well oxygenated and unless unless that unless the eye biter is huge and all the other fish are small or smaller because the bigger fish do need more oxygen but if he's about the same size as everybody else and he's struggling at the top you might want to consider uh, pulling him out putting him in a well oxygenated uh, hospital tank 
and just keeping an eye on him, maybe hit him with a little bit of uh, Fritz a Paracleanse, uh, something like that, something that is good for, for just a general parasite, and just see how he does. How is he eating? Is he eating okay? If he's eating okay, that could work. Uh, Saline Aquatics says Aquarium Salt. Uh, yes, get a hold of, and again, I'm a big Fritz guy. Uh, Fritz uh, Aquarium Salt is, is amazing. It brought back uh, the, the autopharynx tetrastigma that I call my miracle fish, who's bounced back from about three different bouts with near death. Uh, one of them was he got all inflated like a puffer fish, where his gills were standing up, his eyes were bloated. I put him in a small tank and I put a bunch of uh, Fritz salt and he came back within five days. He was back in the aquarium and normal and, and has been going ever since. So, yeah, you can't go wrong with, uh, with aquarium salt. Just be sure you use the right salt. Uh, Thomas Medina could be stress. Yeah, that's true. Is he subdominant? Is he getting chased? Does he have any fin damage? Are there any signs on the side of his body where he might, is missing uh, gill, missing uh, scales where he might have been hit by another fish? Uh, check that out and, and see. If you, add it, uh, if you add it to the entire aquarium, which wouldn't hurt if you add the salt to the entire aquarium, I usually go one tablespoon for every five gallons. Be sure you dissolve it first and then pour it in gradually. One tablespoon for every five gallons of aquarium salt. I hope that helps our Baglio. All right, I'm looking for any other questions. Hi, Ben from Bryan Park. Does uh, CCAM concentrated chlorine remover have a shelf life? Uh, I have 150 gallon with 30 gallon sump. I do 50, imagine you mean 50% water change over three weeks. The CCAM on Amazon is 8.8 .8 pounds for 110 bucks. Wow. Uh, I don't know. If you, if you contact CCAM directly, if you email them, they will answer you. I have had situations where I've emailed them and they will reply. I use their um, I use their product called Safe, and a quarter teaspoon can condition 300 gallons, and I'll have that stuff for years. And I don't every time you open it, it still smells really strong. <laughs> so I don't think it's I don't think it's losing its potency. It's called Seachem Safe. Are we talking about the same thing? But I don't think it has. Uh, I haven't. I mean, it's never stopped working. I've never had a problem. But if you write to CCAM directly, they will, uh, they will actually respond. All right, let's see. Robert Johnson. Robert Johnson went into sticker shock. It's true. The prices are high. I mean, you want to you get big colored up males that take a long time, a lot of food, a lot of time to, to get going. You're going to have to pay big bucks, unfortunately, uh, unless you're lucky enough to have a local high quality cichlid store with a lot of variety near you. Unfortunately, yes, it, it's going to cost. And for some of us, uh, you know, we buy them as fry and grow them out, save you, save you some money that way. Uh, for others, you just want to get a big grown-out male. If you've got the money and you want to go ahead and enjoy them right now, uh, definitely uh, you will not regret it. They're just a lot of fun. I am uh, watching the rasboras in the planted tank, five of them, right up against the glass, schooling back and forth. And it is very, very cool. Okay, my friends, that's it for me. You're the best. Thank you for sitting in. 
And uh, I really appreciate you all. I will see you next week at the same time. And be sure to check out the replay. And tell all your friends about the Saturday live stream. Let's get this live stream growing. And thank you to all of you who subscribed and got the channel up over 50,000 subscribers. You rock, my friends. That was great. I was so happy about it, as you heard on Wednesday night. All right. So that's it for me. I will see you folks again next week. And uh, with that, we will go ahead and, uh, and end off.